Hi, I'm Tim Johnson, Senior Editor at American Woodworker Magazine, and today I'm going to show you how to build this flammables cabinet. An important addition to any home woodworking shop, it allows you to safely store the flammable liquids you use for finishing. It may surprise you to learn that a flammables cabinet is not meant to contain a fire. Rather, it's designed to keep fire away from its flammable contents for as long as possible so you have time to escape. Its signage also helps firefighters identify and isolate a danger zone. This cabinet is designed to meet the code requirements of the National Fire Protection Association. Specifically, it's designed to keep fire away from its contents for 10 minutes. That might not seem very long, but in the event of a fire, every second counts. The cabinet is basically just a box, so it's easy to build. But to meet the NFPA code, there are a few special requirements. The first is that the cabinet must be built using one inch thick plywood, such as this one inch AC exterior grade fir. You can usually custom order this thick plywood at a home center, and full service lumber yards usually keep it in stock. Another requirement is for the cabinet to be constructed with shoulder joinery that's glued and screwed so air can infiltrate through the joints to the inside. As you can see, I've already cut dados and rabbits, and I've also pre-drilled holes for the screws. So the next step is to apply glue and assemble the box and clamp it. To help seal the cabinet, all of the glue joints are reinforced with screws. The rabbit joints are reinforced on both sides, so the screws have to be offset. It's easiest to install the shelf now before the face frame is attached to the cabinet. You can see the shelf is made out of three quarter inch plywood and has a lip attached to stiffen it. We had to use three quarter inch plywood because we used an entire sheet of one inch plywood to build the cabinet itself. The shelf mounts on cleats that you can see I've attached inside the cabinet. Here's the completed face frame. Like the other parts of the cabinet, it's made from one inch thick plywood. And on the back, you can see that I assembled it with pocket hole joinery and glue. You can also see that both sides and the bottom edge are rabbited so they'll fit inside the cabinet. The top edge, on the other hand, isn't rabbited because it fits into a rabbit that's cut into the top of the cabinet. Before I can fasten the face frame to the cabinet, I have to attach the door seals on its back side. The door seals are pieces of one quarter inch hardboard that are cut so that they overlay the door openings on all four sides. When assembled, these pieces also must rest inside the rabbit at the bottom and the rabbits on the side, and they also must rest far enough down from the top so they don't interfere when you install the face frame. Once you've got the pieces cut and sized correctly, Fasten them with glue and nails, then fasten the face frame to the cabinet. Once you've finished building the cabinet, the next step is to apply a coat of fire retardant paint, such as Fire Free Class A, to every exposed surface, including the bottom, the back, and the doors. This is a latex paint that dries in about an hour. One coat is sufficient, and when exposed to a fire, this paint doesn't burn. Instead, it swells and forms a char that protects the surfaces beneath it. After the paint is dry, install the doors to complete the cabinet. The doors have to be mounted on spring hinges so they'll close automatically. These are screen door spring hinges from a hardware store. You have to install latches to keep the doors closed, and it's important to put on a warning sign to let everyone know what's inside the cabinet. 